This is my strain. This is Jack Herrera. I buy it in bulk. And uh, it's as simple as this. What this does for me is give me clarity. As soon as I put this in my system, the picture becomes clear. The chemical disruption that's been caused from playing the game of football does not allow me to have clarity. And that's it. At the end of the day, this is resolving things that Wellbutrin couldn't, Depakote couldn't, Zoloft couldn't, Vicodin couldn't, Flexerol couldn't, Ambien couldn't. And you're talking seven pills. Between this and these seven medications that I was taking daily is that this had hopelessness and this is complete hope. Secret handshake. Playing football, injuries occur, serious injuries occur, and put you on the operating table and you're never the same. My first major injury was blowing out my knee, completely dislocating my knee, my left knee in college uh, during practice and spring drills. The pharmaceuticals were introduced and so the painkillers and all those things, the anti-inflammatories, those things became frequent and constant. Uh, because they were so readily available. I then went to the NFL, the injuries kept coming on, uh, more surgeries, more injuries, more medicines, to where at the end of the day, these things just kept building uh, and they would manifest in these extreme blow-up situations where all the pain, all the frustration, uh, anger would just erupt. When he went into the NFL, um, there started to be changes. And um, after the concussions, uh, I couldn't even talk to him. We didn't do anything. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't interact with anyone. And when we did, it was always Kyle in the corner and me uncomfortable and me making excuses for Kyle. Oh, well, he doesn't feel good. Oh, were he this? Oh, he, sorry, he's just a dick. He knew that he was more apt to rage, or it would overtake him to where he just, he couldn't handle situations. The violence, the rage, all those things kept getting bigger. Participating in football, you need it. You have to have it. If you don't have that, then you're done. You're not going to succeed. And that's what I had. Uh, unfortunately, I, I couldn't come off the field and leave it at the job. He would break a table or a chair or lamps. Oh, Jesus, I will not buy an a lamp that's cost more than 20 bucks for a long time because it's going, at some point, it's gonna go. I know I'm a scary person when that switch hits. And so very intimidating and, uh, again, breaking of, of furniture and throwing things um, uh, and being very loud and uh, scary. After my football career, I found myself unconscious on a floor at a venue watching a show one night with my wife. Oh, it was terrifying. He was perfectly fine. It was a relaxing night. We were just kind of sitting there listening to some live music. He leaned over and put his head on my shoulder. And I'm like, huh, you know, that's like he was going to sleep. Didn't get up. And I'm like, come on, Kyle. You know, Kyle just laid over and passed out and slid down to the ground. I instantly hollered at the bartender to call an ambulance, had no clue what was going on. And it was about, about two minutes later, he kind of woke up and came to. And I find myself waking up on the floor in a bar, and I then go into a vertigo spin and it wouldn't end, and ultimately had a seizure and was hospitalized for three days. That then spawned the discussion of what happened to my brain. It's very apparent that there's something wrong here. You know, this big blurred mass was alarming everyone, and so they started to, well, you got a bad brain injury. trying to think, what, what are all these drugs that I've taken since 1996? Wellbutrin, Vicodin, Flexerol, Depakote, Zoloft, 
somas, percocets, Vioxx, morphine, Tordal. Just this right here, that's about two hits. And that's all you need that deals with anxiety, depression, light sensitivity, that all of those other ones were trying to address. I moved back from Tennessee to California because I knew there was something with marijuana. I knew that cannabis had an answer. Was this the answer that uh, I was looking for to fix all my issues? I didn't believe that that was the case, but I was hoping so. I went up to Northern California and got some seeds and uh, planted them and they were uh, taken off. Then I started to find these strains that when I used that, I was better. I had the best night's sleep I'd had in about six months or so. And my energy was back, my motivation was back. This was the strain that actually helped me get off the pills. When I found the San Fernando Valley strain, uh, I immediately knew that I could use this to get off of those. I realized I could wean myself off with using this strain. You know, I got off of one pill down to two. And the further I got away from those, the, the more I realized how much more cannabis could do for me. We have just seen unbelievable changes in him. Uh, I can now talk to him. He's kind and loving once again. He's like the old Kyle. And I never would have believed it unless I had seen it myself. So now I'm an advocate for, for cannabis. Get ready, Dean. He's a big, bubbly teddy bear. And he's kind to everyone and engaging with everyone. And, and, and finally now, we've got a connection back to where he, he wants to be a part of people's lives. He wants to help people. He wants to hear your stories. He wants to see how he can help your kid who's, who's going to play football and talk to you about the concussions and the, the dangers. Where that part of his life was shut off for so long. I don't know how many guys I've talked down from the ledge ex-NFL players that have called me grown men crying. It's dementia, you know, this, this is what it is. 